slimmer, faster, lighter, longer, larger. Those were Samsung's promises just a few weeks ago at the IFA 2013 unveiling of its newest phablet, the Galaxy Note 3. And now, thanks to our friends at Negri Electronics, we've got a brand new Note 3 of our own here at Pocket Now. Let's find out just how big an improvement it is over its predecessor, last year's surprise blockbuster, the Galaxy Note 2. First things first. Yes, we did just unbox the Note 3 a mere 48 hours ago, so impressions of the device are in their infancy. Wait for our full Galaxy Note 3 review coming the week of September 30th for our more detailed feelings on this device. Be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss it. Secondly, we want to make clear exactly which models we're comparing here. The Galaxy Note 2 we have on hand is the AT&T version for North America, while our new Note 3 is international unlocked model SMN900. And finally, as we mentioned in the intro, this Note 3 review unit comes to us from Negri Electronics. Visit them in the link in the video description if you're looking for a Note 3 of your own. Now, let's see how the incoming and outgoing kings of the phablet world compare. Hardware is up first, and there's actually quite a big disparity here. Last year's Note 2 was very much an expanded Galaxy S3, featuring a lot of curves and a faux brushed metal finish on its plastic battery cover, all of it topped off with a thick coat of gleaming Samsung hyperglaze. All that plastic surrounded a 5.5-inch Super AMOLED display at 720p resolution, with a Wacom digitizer capable of over a thousand levels of pressure sensitivity, used to great effect by the Note 2's onboard S Pen. The whole affair felt good in the hand, solid because of its 183 gram mass and 9.4 millimeter thickness, but not great because of that glossy plastic. Well, much as we love to hate on that hyperglaze coating, we have to admit that we do miss it just a little on the Note 3. Not due to appearance, we actually much prefer the look of the Note 3's faux leather with its fine border stitching, a motif that plays better with the concept of the Note family and does a better job of setting it apart. But the new material is slippery, and that combines with the new Note's sharper corners and reduced thickness and mass to make it a little less comfortable in the hand. The trade-off is absolutely worth it. It's nice to see the Note 3 stand out a bit aesthetically from the Galaxy S line, and the new, larger 5.7-inch 1080p display features over 100 more pixels per inch and much more accurate colors for those who crave maximum performance from their phablet screens. But for us, the Note 2 is still the more comfortable device to hold in the hand. The Galaxy Note line is for the most power-hungry of power users, and so we shouldn't be surprised to find the so-called Exynos Okta chipset under the hood of the new Note 3, backed up by an impressive 3 gigs of RAM. US versions of the Note 3 will feature LTE support and a Snapdragon 800 processor at 2.3 GHz in lieu of this setup, but either way, the new combo easily trumps the Note 2's 1.6 GHz Exynos 4412 and 2 gigs of RAM. These being Samsung devices, the removable batteries and expandable storage options remain, though the Note 3 does bump its battery capacity a bit. To complete its spec dominance, the Note 3 adds a handful of new features not found on the 2, like an infrared port, Wi-Fi 802.11 AC, a barometer, and a big honkin' USB 3 port and cable for faster charging and data transfers. But don't worry, your old micro USB cable will still work. That's the end of the spec dump, now catch your breath while we hop on down to software. The result of all this spec one-upmanship should be a significantly more capable device but you wouldn't know it necessarily by looking at the interface. We're admittedly running an older Android version on the Note 2, thanks to AT&T, but Samsung's TouchWiz layer is so thick, you're hardly going to notice that gulf. And that heavy UI is much the same between these units. If you didn't like Samsung's bloated, cartoony UI before, you won't like it now. And you certainly won't like the occasional skip or stutter the heavy software imposes on your experience. If you're the rooting and modding type, you'll probably be switching to a custom launcher soon after picking up either of these. Thankfully, not all the changes are bad. Samsung has added its useful S Health fitness suite to the Note 3, which leverages the device's new sensor array to help you stay in shape. And Samsung Knox is here, for those who need a firewall between work and play on their smartphone. 
More importantly, the company has also overhauled the S Pen interface on the Note 3, instituting Air Command, a circular launch pad containing useful shortcuts to stylus-related system functions, as well as a system-wide search tool called S Finder. The S Pen itself has received a slight cosmetic upgrade on the 3, and it can now be inserted into the silo at any roll angle, but it is a little harder to remove. And yes, this time around, Samsung has given the S Pen the ability to trigger the capacitive buttons, a feature we saw on the Note 8, and a very welcome addition here. Back on the software, Samsung has added a few more touches, like the flipboard Ask My Magazine feature, kind of like HTC's Blink feed, it lives below the home screen. And the company has also renovated the multi-screen feature on the Note 3 to make it a little svelter and easier to use, and it's also built in yet another multitasking feature, quick apps in repositionable, self-contained windows. We didn't like this approach on the LG G2, and we can't see it being terribly useful here either, but it's worth mentioning that it's not found on the Note 2. Now, we do expect some of these enhancements to come to the Note 2 with software updates eventually, but for now, they give the Note 3 a pretty decisive edge in terms of functionality. Those improvements continue popping up not just in benchmarks, where the Note 3 predictably trounces its predecessor, but in day-to-day -day use as well. For the first time in a while, we've got a new Samsung device that actually delivers better voice quality than its predecessor. The Note 3 delivers crisper sound on our end, and callers said we sounded better on it than on the Note 2 in both conventional and loudspeaker modes. Speakerphone performance is another story, with the bottom-mounted unit on the Note 3 sounding quieter and less bassy, delivering thinner sound overall. It's still a fine unit, it's just not as throaty as the one on the older phone. The new Note steps it up in camera performance, replacing the Note 2's 8-megapixel camera with a new 13-megapixel unit very similar to the one found on the Galaxy S4. The Note 3's bump in resolution is welcome, and even shooting at 9.6 megapixels to preserve the same aspect ratio, the photos produced are visibly crisper, improving on an already pretty solid camera under ideal lighting conditions. Unfortunately, the new phone features a problem we remember from the S4. It may not be a problem for you, but we found it annoying. A much narrower field of view is present on the Note 3, meaning you need to get quite a bit further from your subject to fit it all in the frame. Also, Samsung has inexplicably removed the night shooting mode from the Note 3's viewfinder, meaning low-light photos aren't nearly as good. In its place, novelty modes like Golf Shot. This would be pretty funny if it wasn't so disappointing. We look forward to the company's re-inclusion of night shooting mode in a future software update, which we hope is forthcoming. Things get brighter on the video side, with the Note 3 delivering superior audio performance and faster exposure adjustments, along with a more balanced color overall than the Note 2, though the autofocus is a little on the slow side. Fortunately, the software anti-shake makes up for it. It captures pretty smooth video for a phone with no optical image stabilization. So, should you invest in a Note 3 of your own? Well, listen, if you're a die-hard phablet fan, you already know the answer. The added horsepower of the Note 3's spec sheet and its many, many improvements over the previous generation means you've probably already pre-ordered one. And from what we can see at this early point, you should probably feel pretty good about your purchase. But if you're already carrying or thinking about picking up a Note 2, you should feel pretty good about that, too. The phone got one of our highest ratings last year, and it's aged quite well since. The Note 3 is still the more impressive device by a long shot, but not so much so that you should be throwing your Note 2 in the recycle bin just yet. There's much more to come from Pocket Now on the new Galaxy Note 3, including our full review. Stay tuned for it, follow us on social media, drop a comment down below if you have something to say, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.